Hey everybody, stay tuned today where Jeff and I will be talking about Start Small and Expand Landing Zones and how you can deploy them within your environment. So welcome to the Azure Enablement Show. In this show, we're having technical conversations with some Microsoft experts around the questions and potential obstacles that you might encounter along your cloud adoption journey. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Start Small and Expand Landing Zone. And in order to have that conversation with me, I'm welcoming my guest, Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Sarah. Thanks. Glad to be here. Looking forward to it. Awesome. So as I said, we're talking about Start Small and Expand Landing Zones. Jeff, could you tell us a little bit about them and why our customers would be thinking about using them? Yeah, so the idea here is that you want to get started in the cloud. You want to start to uh, set up uh, an environment for the workloads that you're bringing into the cloud. And so you have to have some basis to start with, some construct of what the requirements are going to be and how to align them. So the customer needs to flesh out what their cloud adoption plans are going to be and better understand things like governance, the network, uh, security requirements for uh, for their adoption. So the Azure landing zones start small and expand. It helps them with being able to uh, pull uh, all those requirements together and, and then start uh, learning more about the, the Azure platform. Awesome. Now, I've heard people talk about design areas within these landing zones. I take it they are very key to working through the process of picking the right landing zone and, and going through that. Is, is that correct to say, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as we were just mentioning, is, is that a customer has requirements right around um, what they need for their workload inside of the cloud. And so let's just take a look because we, we've got some, some design areas to help customers with this. And we take a very uh, practical, systematic approach to this. So let's look at these Azure landing zones by design area. Um, we think there are eight critical areas um, for a customer to, uh, to consider, right, uh, as they go to adopt the cloud. The first one is the enterprise enrollment. And what this represents is the billing mechanism, right? The alignment from a billing standpoint of their relationship with Microsoft. And then we have identity. And identity is about IAM. It's about the access controls that you would need in the cloud in order to be able to uh, uh, securely operate those workloads. Um, and resource organization is the construct of how you organize not just things like subscriptions within Azure or resource groups within Azure, but also how you're going to tag things, how you're going to uh, align them uh, you, when you're uh, adopting the service. Uh, and, and as always, it's important as you design how you're going to organize those solutions is how they're going to connect, whether they need things like internally the Azure talking to the network or externally talking to a headquarters or a branch office or even within Azure. Um, uh, different data centers, right? So all of that networking and connectivity uh, is a design area. The business connect, uh, business continuity and disaster recovery. So this is making sure that you have a business plan uh, in place if there were any kind of disaster to happen that you would be able to quickly get business back up and rolling um, as uh, any, any kind of interruption that would happen. Governance discipline, right? This is uh, starts with number one, making sure you've got an inventory, you understand the assets that you have in the cloud, you understand who has access to those assets. You also uh, want to uh, create a model of governance that allows you to understand the investments that you're making uh, in the cloud. And then two that, that really go together are this deployment operations and operations baseline because the deployment options um, there are about how you are going to take your resources and configure them into uh, the platform and uh, the operations baseline is what must be true when it comes to uh, all of those requirements that we, we uh, talked to earlier about the network and uh, security so the operations baseline is the minimum standard that you need to achieve, a uh, minimal viable product that you need to achieve when uh, you talk about management and the operations uh, for your workload within Azure. So these are all the design areas and, and that we really uh, look to uh, address within a start small uh, approach. And then we expand that out through iterative approach, uh, iterative um, cycles of improvement uh, to, for that customer. 
Okay, so once our customers have um, went through all these design areas and thought out their requirements, how do they actually implement this starting small and, and expand landing zone, Jeff? Is it a case of they have to go into the Azure portal and deploy various different um, resources or is there a template that they could maybe even use to get started with this? That's a great question. You know, there are a number of, of ways to get started. Um, in the cloud option framework, we want to make sure that a customer has a plan and that they've gone through and developed a strategy for the cloud. And as they get ready in, in the ready phase of the cloud option framework, it's time to start making it real. And so um, we have ARM templates that are available uh, that customers can use. These are Azure Resource Manager um, uh, tooling in order to be able to standardize how you deploy. Um, but the one thing that comes to mind first is Azure Blueprints. And so I'd like to just show Azure Blueprints for a second and, and, and what we can do with Azure Blueprints. Yeah, that'd be great. So let's take a look here. Uh, I've got the uh, Azure portal open. To get to this, you can just simply type in Blueprints um, in the top of the browser and you can get here. Uh, but looking at our Blueprints, we have, uh, if you go into the definition. So what is a Blueprint definition? A Blueprint definition is a recording of a set of artifacts that you can deploy for uh, your Azure platform, right? And so uh, let's go ahead and create one. So we'll create a Blueprint. And in doing so, one of the resources that we have available uh, for customers who are wanting to start with their landing zone is we have the CAF Foundation, the Cloud Option Framework Foundation Start Small uh, Landing Zone. We also have one that is for migration, uh, right? So these are um, pre-built blueprints that you can go into the Azure Forge like I, I'm about to do. I can just select this foundation to get started. I'll go here and add a blueprint name. So I'm going to call this CAF Foundation 2 for my deployment here. And then I have to define a scope. This is called location. Uh, so I'll go in and I have a WBD deployment that I've been getting started on. So I'll select my WBD subscription here and go ahead and, um, and save this draft. So I'm saving this draft now because I've, I've created a blueprint. Um, here we go. It's done now. Here's my CAF foundation blueprint that's now in my subscription. Now I've gone ahead and created uh, one uh, and added a little bit of customization to it. So let's look at what's in that blueprint. So if I go into that blueprint, uh, here I can see I've got um, some Azure Security Center template uh, that's put in place along with some policies that are included in this blueprint. And then there's the section down here that's about shared services for deployment. So we've got a log analytics deployment and we have Key Vault. And then I've customized here the uh, LZ uh, so for my VNet. So my VNet is included in my Blueprint to, to deploy. So if I go back to Blueprints, you'll see that once you finish the Blueprint, there's also an Assigned Blueprints. So I can then say, okay, I have a subscription. I want to assign this Blueprint to that subscription and have it deployed. So CAF Foundation has been deployed. I have it assigned here in my subscription list under my WVD subscription. You'll see that it's actually uh, assigned into that subscription. Excellent. That looks really easy to get started. Um, the one thing that's going through my head when you were demoing that, though, Jeff, is what happens if something changes, if a design requirement changes after deployment or even during deployment? Can you change this or is it a case of you need to delete it all and start again? How does that work? I think that's one of the challenges that customers face, right, uh, is uh, change management and configuration drift and, and blueprints has versioning inside of it. So when you when there is a change that's been made, number one, you can audit that using Azure policy. Number two, you know that that configuration um, for your platform, you can you can go back in your blueprint and create a second version, right? So this allows you to have a, um, a blueprint allows you to have a, a module for your landing zone that is the same configuration each time it's deployed. And then as there are changes that need to be made, you can modify that blueprint, update it, and then redeploy it or reassign it and get those updates put into um, in your production environment. In the same way, you could have another subscription that was um, specifically for, um, let's call it a, a user acceptance testing environment. And, and so you could make changes to that blueprint until you got um, your golden image, so to speak, is where you know, traditionally in IT, in IT, we had this golden image philosophy when it came to VM creation process. This is like having a golden image for your landing zone. So now you can define and track uh, and keep changes uh, in the entire process of uh, deploying Azure. 
That that sounds great. Now, I know you talk to a lot of customers, Jeff. Um, do you have any um, stories you could maybe share about some of the common mistakes that you see customers make so that our audience can learn from those mistakes and not actually follow them as well? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I, you know, the first thing, uh, as always, is to be ready, you know, have your plan ready. So start with the eight critical design areas, meaning know what those requirements can be and document those requirements. You want to treat the environment that you're deploying in Azure as though it is going to be production, which means gathering all those uh, all those uh, uh, requirements across um, your network, across your governance model, right, uh, and having them put in place. The second thing that I see with customers, so the first thing is just, you know, gathering your, your requirements in the cloud. The second thing that I often see is that you um, don't have a set process when, when a customer starts and so that can cause rework. And so what happens is um, when you start deploying into, into the cloud, you're just trying to get something up and going for production. And so what I'd say there is if you, if you utilize something like Azure Blueprints, you can have a standard way to track your changes as you're learning, right? And get used to how you're gonna operate in the cloud. We call it the cloud operating model. And so with Start Small and Expand, you can start with just addressing storage inside of the blueprint and then identity. And then you can think of things like role-based access control and you can build iteratively on that blueprint. And so that is a process by which you're gonna become more familiar. And in the DevOps, what I like to say, repetition creates mastery, right, is a, is a common thing. And so creating that freedom to fail and to deploy something where um, you're going to have the opportunity to make it better in each iteration is the ideal environment to create. Uh, and I think that gives uh, a, a clear path to success. Cool. Thank you for sharing those tips. Um, if our customers actually wanted to go and implement the Start Small and Expand Landing Zone, is there a great place for them to go to get some more resources and have a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, within the cloud adoption framework, we have an Azure landing zone section. Within the Azure landing zone section, there's a, uh, there is a start small and expand uh, section here. And so in the start small and expand section, we have uh, links for the cloud adoption framework migration landing zone, as well as a foundation. And we've helped with uh, understanding some of these concepts around landing zone operations, governance, and security, and provided some guidance there as well. So this is a key place that a customer getting started can go and gather uh, more information um, and, and quickly get started uh, for deploying your workload into Azure. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. And I've got a clear idea of what that Start Small and Expand Landing Zone is now. And if you're looking to grab some of the resources that Jeff's talked about, please head over to our description box. We will be dropping the links for those. Um, and please, as well, stay tuned for future episodes of the Azure Enablement Show.